In 2009, NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory released a curious image, a pulsar and its surrounding nebula that's shaped like a hand. Since then, astronomers have used Chandra and other telescopes to continue to observe this object. Now, new radio data from the Australia Telescope Compact Array, ATCA, has been combined with Chandra's X-ray data to provide a fresh view of this exploded star and its environment, to help understand its peculiar properties and shape. At the centre of this new image lies the pulsar B150958, a rapidly spinning neutron star that's only about 12 miles in diameter. This tiny object is responsible for producing an intricate nebula called MSH 1552 that spans over 150 light years or about 900 trillion miles. The nebula which is produced by energetic particles, resembles a human hand with a palm and extended fingers. The collapse of a massive star created the pulsar when much of the star crashed inward once it burned through its nuclear fuel. An ensuing explosion sent the star's outer layers rushing into space as a supernova. The pulsar spins around almost seven times a second and has a strong magnetic field, about 15 trillion times stronger than Earth's. The rapid rotation and strong magnetic field make B150958 one of the most powerful electromagnetic generators in the galaxy, enabling it to drive an energetic wind of electrons and other particles away from the pulsar, creating the nebula. In this new composite image, the ATCA radio data in red has been combined with X-rays from Chandra shown in blue, orange and yellow, along with an optical image of hydrogen gas shown in gold. The areas of overlap between the X-ray and radio data in MSH 1552 show as purple. The optical image includes stars in the field of view along with parts of the supernova's debris, the supernova remnant RCW 89. Radio data from ATCA reveals complex filaments that are aligned with the directions of the nebula's magnetic field, shown here with short white lines. These filaments could result from the collision of the pulsar's particle wind with the supernova's debris. By comparing the radio and X-ray data, researchers identified key differences between the sources of the two types of light. In particular, some prominent X-ray features, including the jet towards the bottom of the image and the inner parts of the three fingers towards the top, aren't detected in radio waves. This suggests that highly energetic particles are leaking out from a shock wave near the pulsar and moving along magnetic field lines to create the fingers. The radio data also shows that RCW89 structure is different from typical young supernova remnants. Much of the radio emission is patchy and closely matches clumps of X-ray and optical emission. It also extends well beyond the X-ray emission. All of these characteristics support the idea that RCW89 is colliding with a dense cloud of nearby hydrogen gas. However, the researchers don't fully understand all the data. One area that's perplexing is the sharp boundary of X-ray emission in the upper right of the image that seems to be the blast wave from the supernova. Supernova blast waves are usually bright in radio waves for young supernova remnants like RCW89, so it's surprising that there's no radio signal at the X-ray boundary. MSH 1552 and RCW89 show many unique features not found in other young sources. There are, however, still many open questions regarding the formation and evolution of these structures. Further work is needed to provide better understanding of the complex interplay between the pulsar wind and the supernova debris.